Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is Jeremy Bazell from the Washington Accessibility Program. We're going to get started in a moment, but I do want to do a microphone check to ensure that people are able to hear me. Um, so uh, we've got about uh, 28 participants now. We're going to give it another minute just to see if other folks show up. Uh, so please bear with us. We'll be getting ready in a second. Okay, uh, thanks for joining us today. I decided to get started. We have a nice round number of 30 participants and hopefully it will go up from there. Um, for those of you who are just joining us, my name is Jeremy Bazell. I am with the um, WASO Accessibility Program. Um, and we are the folks who have been lucky enough to secure um, scholarships for certificates for um, the accessibility program that is sponsored by Epley, who you will be hearing from in a minute. Um, we had an overwhelming response of people who are interested in the certificate program. Um, and we are thrilled to have so many people who um, are interested. Um, currently, we have, uh, we still don't have more people than we have certificates. However, we may be in a situation where we have more people than um, Epley has capacity to um, have participate in a single cohort. So we thought what we would do is we would provide people with the opportunity to hear about the various options that are available um, for accessibility training so that you can find the option that suits your schedule and your interests best. That way what we can do is we can match you to the best program um, we can match you to the best timing of the program, and we can make sure that everybody's needs get, get met, and hopefully we don't turn anyone away. So that is the purpose of today's call, is just to give you enough information that you can make some decisions about which program and when you would like to participate in accessibility training. Um, no one is being cut off because they did not participate in today's call. We will send a recording out uh, recording of today's call out to anyone who expresses an interest in the accessibility program, and we will go from there. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Michelle Cook, who um, does these programs at Epley. Uh, Michelle, I'm sure you want to tell people about how to handle using the Q&A or, or chat function um, while they're on Zoom, but I'm going to let her take it away to provide you with the background information you would need in order to make decisions about which programs um, you would like to dedicate your time to. All right, thank you, Jeremy. Yeah, so if everybody will take a moment to um, locate at the bottom of your webinar screen, uh, the Q&A feature. Um, that is where you can submit questions at any time uh, while I'm going through the information about the various accessibility training programs. Um, and I will get to it as able, um, and I'll try to definitely reserve some time at the end to address those questions as well. Um, Jeremy, I'll ask you to also keep an eye on the Q&A section. So if there is something that you know the answer to, you can respond to that as well to maximize our time together. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get started, um, jump right in. Um, again, my name is Michelle Cook. I'm the Accessibility Program Manager um, at the Epley Institute at Indiana University. Um, I also oversee the operations of the National Center on Accessibility, which is a program of the Epley Institute at IU. Um, Epley and NCA have been creating uh, accessibility related training programs for a number of years, and I've been privileged to be involved um, in those for about 13, almost 14 years of my career now. Um, and so I'm going to dive in and talk about um, first the first up is the accessibility certificate program. Um, and sorry, let me back up just for a second. 
objectives for at the end of the um, our uh, little session today are to discuss the requirements and level of engagement for the Foundations of Accessibility Certificate and also the introduction to accessibility management training programs, uh, which is a new program that's coming online soon. Um, and then also determine which training will be most beneficial for your individual participation. So kicking it off with the Foundations of Accessibility Certificate Program. Some of the certificate program features um, include that this is an entirely web-based program. You'll have a virtual classroom learning environment in, in which to access all of the training materials. Everything is online for you in one nice little succinct uh, package. Uh, so there's not a lot of going out and into various components apart from the e-courses, the assessments and the assignments, which are the three biggest components of the certificate program itself. Um, those are the, the learning events that, that you will be expected to participate in as part of the, your certificate program course of study. The content through the e-courses, the assessments, and the assignments covers the following topic areas. So these are the, the key content components. The first is Accessibility Essentials, which is a four-part micro-learning series that takes you through um, really critical accessibility information, um, establishing that baseline for what does equity and cultural humility mean, uh, who are people with disabilities that are coming to national park sites um, that we might expect to encounter um, and provide valuable experiences for. Um, so it's, it's the, sort of the disability awareness component, but we're calling it accessibility essentials because this is really critical key information uh, related to accessibility and disability in general. Um, the next topic area is program access. This is an extremely broad overarching term that essentially means um, what kinds of quality experiences are we providing to our visitors and how can we make those experiences accessible to a variety of people with disabilities. Um, not we're trying to expand by formatting things in this sequence we're trying to expand the idea of um, accessibility from more than just people who use wheelchairs or other types of mobility devices but really look at the spectrum of people with disabilities um, in terms of that equity component so program access really hits on that topic a lot um, we follow that up with universal design, which doesn't specifically um, uh, relate to the built environment only, but can also be applicable to programs um, and services as well. Follow that up with navigating the standards for accessible design. So that is the meat of how do we design accessibility, accessible facilities um, and anticipate uh, the, the design components that will go into new construction or renovation projects um, that have that visitor impact as well. The last content area is a capstone assignment, which takes the, the previous four topics and puts it into a presentation as if you were uh, giving an information to your supervisor or your colleagues about accessibility at your park for a particular area or program um, or project. Um, and that's, that's a really fun assignment. To complete the certificate program, you have two options for enrollment. Um, and this information you may have heard previously, but I wanna uh, provide a little bit more detail on this as well. The first enrollment option is the individual option. There's an unlimited number of enrollments under this option. Um, it's a self-paced, self-study approach. And you, can, you have up to one year to complete all of the certificate program assignments under the individual enrollment option. So if you enrolled in the certificate today, you would have a year from today to complete all of your certificate requirements. This allows the greatest level of flexibility. We understand that um, you have other job responsibilities um, and gives you the most uh, uh, flexibility and schedule in terms of timeline for completion. The other option is cohort. Um, a cohort-based uh, approach, we have about 40 students maximum that we can handle in terms of grading uh, assignments and returning your assignments on time so that you get the most out of your certificate program experience. Um, there are assignment due dates, so you're restricted to a little bit more of a tighter schedule with this. Um, it's a 12-week program, so from start to finish, and it includes all the same certificate program uh, components that the individual option includes, plus a discussion forum. So that's the only extra um, that the discussion forum and the opportunity for networking are the other value added components to the cohort approach. There are three cohorts that occur each year. 
The first one, which you are aware of, is coming up starting in February. That goes uh, from February to May. The next one will take place in June. And then the one after that starts in October and goes up through January. Um, each one of the schedules does take into account typical um, holidays, federal holidays, busy seasons. Um, we try to work that into the, the program schedule. So it, um, the one that uh, occurs from October to January, for example, that may actually be a 13 week program um, accounting for the winter holidays. Um, but that schedule varies a little bit um, with each one. Um, given the assignment due dates and, and stuff like that. So to clarify one more thing about the assignment due dates, all of the certificate program components, those e-courses, those assessments, are self-paced within those assignment due date timelines. So for example, this cohort coming up, the start date is, um, I believe it's Fe February 8th, is the official start date. And then the first assignment is not due until the first week of March. So between February 8th, the official start date of the cohort, and uh, that first week in March, you are expected to, as a student, complete all of the e-courses and the assessment, which is a multiple choice quiz um, that's inside the virtual classroom, and complete your assignment and upload it to the virtual classroom within that time frame. There are no live events. There's nothing that's scheduled that says you must be on your computer from this time to this time. Um, for those learning events. It's all asynchronous on your own, own time. The next program that I want to talk about is the Introduction to Accessibility Management for NPS Units. This one is an online blended learning uh, training. Blended learning essentially means that there are multiple ways to engage with the content. So there's some um, let me get into the next slide. This one is also entirely web-based. There's a virtual classroom environment, but it's not strictly on your own um, learning time or, or learning focus, learning opportunities with e-courses and assessments and assignments. There's also the opportunity for live webinars. Um, there's a, also more discussion forums integrated with this program as well. Um, this one is currently being uh, in development. We are taking the components of a classroom course that we piloted last year and putting it online uh, for a virtual audience to try and reach more folks um, and uh, deliver this training to a, a wider po uh, population in the, in the field um, of accessibility in the, in, in the NPS. So web-based class, virtual classroom learning environment, you do have that live webinar component to this course. You also have e-courses and other asynchronous virtual content. So again, what I mean by that is those things are done on your own time outside of the scheduled live webinar sessions. There are discussion forums as well, also assessments and some assignments. The course content for this program, the Introduction to Accessibility Management, includes that same accessibility essentials content, and then also followed up with um, accessibility management actions for NPS units. Those include things like how to be an accessibility advocate, um, looking a, li a little bit at and considering how policies, practices, and procedures impact accessible experiences at parks. Um, staff training as a component of accessibility, also emergency preparedness and responding, responding positively to concerns and complaints. Um, there's also a, a section on the a living, creating and um, acknowledging a living legacy of accessibility in the NPS, followed up by program access, the Architectural Barriers Act standards, universal design, historic sites, and the basics of accessibility assessment. So the content is a little bit more intensive than simply the Foundations of Accessibility Certificate Program, although many, many, if not all of those components are part of this program. The certificate content is part of the blended learning. So to commit to this blended learning experience, the duration is four weeks. It's a four week long program. Um, you would be expected as a student to complete weekly asynchronous course content. Again, those are those e-courses, discussion forums, and assignments. Attend all live webinar sessions. There will be two per week. And there's a limit on the enrollment for this one of 25 students. Um, and this course does run two times per year. 
Um, again, like I said, this one is still in development, so more information will be forthcoming about how to sign up for this uh, when it does become available. We're looking to start the program in late March or early April. So a little course comparison. There's a lot of information on this slide, um, but this may be something you want to refer back to um, in the future or uh, digest right now as you decide which program is more um, best suits your needs and your time commitments and, and learning um, needs as, as it relates to accessibility. So um, in terms of the format for the course, the, the course options, um, they're all online. The individual certificate, the cohort certificate, and the blended learning are all online. Um, for in terms of live learning events, the only one that includes those live events is the blended learning training program, the intro to accessibility management. The time commitment in total, uh, you have one year to complete the individual option for the certificate program, 12 weeks for the certificate program cohort, and then a four week timeline for the blended learning. In terms of a weekly time commitment, my best guess uh, at this particular time um, is that the individual certificate program, that's very flexible. You have a year to complete that program. So some weeks will be absolutely zero time. Other weeks uh, may be more intensive as you work on your assignments or complete e-courses. For the certificate program cohort, it's about one to two hours per week. Um, I try to give uh, each, the schedule for the cohort program does allow you that flexibility. Um, you have multiple weeks in order to complete your um, e-courses, assessments, and assignments for each course unit in each of those topic areas. So it's about one to two hours. And then the blended learning program is about 10 hours per week. It's a pretty intensive time commitment. That takes into account the live webinars. It also takes into account the estimated time that it will take you to complete any um, e-course uh, assignments, uh, excuse me, e-course uh, content, any assignments and any assessments that are part of that um, course of study. In terms of technology, um, if technology may be a barrier for you or um, you're wondering what types um, of um, electronic uh, involvement you're going to be having in, in each of these programs. The certificate program is a low to moderate technology proficiency. Um, as long as you can create your account on our online learning platform and access the virtual classroom, you should have no problem uh, completing the assignment requirements. A general familiarity with Microsoft Word and Microsoft PowerPoint are beneficial, uh, but there is assignment guidance and help is always available via help desk. Um, through our office as well. In terms of technology proficiency for the blended learning program, there are a couple of other um, virtual uh, engagement opportunities that go above and beyond Microsoft Word and PowerPoint. Um, so I label that as a, a moderate level of uh, proficiency in terms of technology, or at least in a, a, a willingness to learn new programs. <laughs> Uh, in terms of subject matter scope, the certificate program is very foundational. It is wonderful information. Um, the more you put into it, the more you get out of it. By that I mean the assignments allow you the opportunity to really dive into the content and how it applies to your particular park. Um, so what you put into the assignments, you get back in terms of um, feedback from the instructor team um, and stuff like that. So, but it is foundational information. The blended learning goes a little bit deeper and includes a bit of a wider scope in terms of topic areas. So I call that intermediate level of, of subject matter scope. In terms of maximum enrollments, if you choose to participate in the individual certificate, that's unlimited. Anybody can sign up for their, the individual certificate at any time. For the certificate program cohort, we're going to try to keep it to about a maximum of 40 people. And that's really just administratively on our end so that we can make sure we're providing quality feedback to students on their assignments and are not overloaded with um, uh, when assignments come due. We don't have a huge, huge windfall uh, of assignments to get through. And for blended learning, for the blended learning program, we're limiting that enrollment to 25 students. How many of these programs occur annually? Well, for the individual certificate program, that's unlimited. Um, there are a limited number of scholarships available, um, but the certificate program itself, there are no limits on how many students we can take for the individual option. For the certificate program cohort, there are those three uh, cohorts that occur each year, again, starting in February, June, and October. 
And for the blended learning, uh, there are two programs that occur each year, there's four week programs. Are these programs worthwhile? Well, that's a yes, a yes, and a yes, and a yes. Uh, for the certificate program, whether you choose to take the individual or cohort or the blended learning, you're going to get something out of it uh, related to increasing your knowledge and accessibility. There is uh, contact information on your screen here for a certificate. If you're still interested in participating in the certificate program, either the individual or the cohort option, um, send an email to accessibility at nps.gov. Um, if you're interested and want to learn more about the certificate program content or the training content in general or have support questions um, as you are enrolled in any of those programs, you can email us at support at epley.org. Um, and you'll see the little note on the side of the screen there that uh, if you are interested in a scholarship for the February cohort that's starting coming up in a couple of weeks, uh, we ask that you submit those requests by uh, no later than January 29th. Jeremy, did I miss anything on the, the logistics there? So I was just going to say, while Michelle, I'm going to give you a moment to answer the questions that have um, popped up uh, in the Q&A. Um, so I guess if I were to really sum it up in terms of the difference, you know, you've got graduated levels of how much personal control you have over the pacing and the timing and interaction versus with people versus, uh, you know, from, from low to high, meaning if you take the, um, the management course, that is the four week course, that is going to be a little bit more intense, a little bit higher level of interaction, probably a lot less control over the pacing and scheduling. The middle option is you do a cohort, um, which she said we offer, they offer three cohorts. The, the most control, probably, probably least interactive you have is the um, self-paced online course. Um, we, we would welcome you to take any of them. Um, I would say you may not need to take both the online course and the um, management course, um, or you might wanna start out with one that's foundational and then later consider whether you wanna take the intermediate one. For now, what we're focused on is um, making sure we have enough slots for February. So now that you've heard this, as you can see on the screen, we, you really need to email accessibility at nps.gov by January 29th. If you want the February cohort, that way, if we have more people that want the February cohort, then we can handle, we can work something out and figure out if we have alternatives. If you are interested in a later cohort, you are interested in the individual option, or you want to wait for the um, management training that is going to be piloted later on, um, that request can wait. Um, so that's, that's where I would leave it with folks is, is to give you some time to make a decision about whether or not you want a cohort option or an individual option to do, to do not an e-course um, or, or what dates you want to do a cohort option. Um, but if February, the emphasis is please email accessibility at nps.gov by January 29th so that we can figure out how many people want scholarships to make sure we don't exceed the 40 slots that are available. And I've got a, I've got a couple of items in the Q&A that I think I can answer live probably a little okay. bit better. So uh, the first one is how do you handle your presentation for the individual option? I'm going to go ahead and make an assumption that that's referring to the capstone presentation. Um, the capstone assignment or presentation is really a, um, it's a presentation, excuse me, there's a, it's a presentation that involves um, the use of PowerPoint where you input key components or key key points that refer back to the previous sections of the certificate program. So everything from those accessibility essentials 
um, up to through program access, universal design, and the standards. Um, and really takes, it's a very focused, there's a lot of assignment guidance for you um, that uh, allows you to lay out those different components for a specific area or program or project um, at your park that either includes accessibility or should include accessibility. So there's a little bit of a flexibility component there um, based on your unique situation in your um, parks on whether or not you would like to highlight and kind of summarize a project that was recently completed, um, recently being like within the last three years or so, um, that included an accessibility components and you want to highlight what those features were, or if you'd like to flip that on its, turn that on its head and make a, uh, create your presentation as sort of a proposal of what an accessibility project, accessibility related project might look like, or a project that includes accessibility components might look like um, at your park in the near future. Um, so there's kind of that dual option there. Um, there's not a lot of involvement other than um, providing some supplemental photos uh, to enhance your PowerPoint presentation. Um, that would involve you going out into your park to gather any information from any other additional staff um, or um, other supports. It's very much a self self study um, type of approach. Let's see about the next one. Um, Helen asked about the, uh, would the certificate program be a good opportunity to learn more about universal design for water access, specifically for paddling? Um, yes, sort of. So the, uh, the e-course content for universal design speaks about the different principles of universal design as they relate to a variety of settings. So that it's not, the content is not specific to one type of recreation area or another. Um, again, the opportunity that you have uh, as a student is to to, while you're completing your assignment, if you would like to focus on a specific area of um, a program area or a project area that might include a universal approach to that particular um, activity, in this case paddling, you can put your answers um, into that assignment um, as if you are focusing on that area and then that gives you the opportunity to get um, expert feedback from your instructors on your ideas related to universal design. The same applies to the assignments for program access um, or really any of the assignments um, in, the, in the certificate program. So I hope that that answers your question, Helen. So um, yes, that's a great question about uh, interested in doing the individual option. Um, does it have a fee and what are the costs of the program? So yes, the certificate program itself, whether an individual or a cohort, the enrollment typically costs $350. The uh, scholarship that is available will cover the full cost of your enrollment. So it is essentially a voucher or a coupon code um, for $350 to cover the cost of your enrollment fee. Um, if certificate program scholarship codes um, uh, run out, if we uh, give all of those away, um, then the, uh, the certificate would then cost uh, $350 to enroll. Um, any eligibility requirement for scholar scholarships? Not that I'm aware of. Jeremy, correct me if I'm wrong. Simply ask for supervisor approval for you to be able to participate in the program. Um, and just yeah, send that uh, request to accessibility at nps.gov. Yeah, for us, what we're concerned is number one, that you do have your supervisor support to be able to spend the time that's required. Um, and then number two, that you've got the dedication to spend the time that's required because once you get started, <clears throat> I can't recycle that certificate and give it to somebody else. Um, if you're not gonna complete it, I can't give it to somebody else who will complete it once you have started. So that's really all it is. Um, at this point, I mean, one of the reasons why we wanted to have the, the 29th deadline is um, for the February cohort, we're pro if we get more than 40 people, we'll end up doing a first come first serve. Um, and we will, we will sort of go from there. Um, like I said, right now, given the amount of interest, we have a sufficient amount of scholarships for everyone who has currently contacted us. Um, but that doesn't mean others won't contact us in the future asking for the May cohort or the later. So uh, that's why the emphasis is if you, if you really desperately want and need February, let us know. Um, otherwise, you know, 
just please let us know sooner rather than later about the individual option. Um, but, uh, but we'll be talking to other groups later just about the other cohorts. That's great. Jeremy, I don't see any other um, lingering questions. I think that wraps us up for today. All right. Well, we thank everybody for participating. We thank you for your interest. We hope that this information has been helpful in your decision making. Uh, we look forward to, to hearing from you and we look forward to you participating in these opportunities. Mm -hmm.